Today, I'm talking about the deep space network. It's not the network that's going to be bringing you Wi-Fi on a future trip to Mars. And it's also not the network in which aliens will contact us on. Although I did have a really awesome Jodie Foster moment when I got to visit it a few years ago. No, the deep space network is actually how we talk to all of the robots that freckle our solar system. It's through the deep space network that we were able to learn that Curiosity landed safely on Mars, got to hear the very first sounds of interstellar space from Voyager 1, and also got the amazing, awesome photos of Pluto for the very first time from New Horizons. The Deep Space Network consists of three sites around the Earth, spaced about 120 degrees apart, each with multiple steerable radio antennas. These three sites of the Deep Space Network maintain line-of-sight communication with the space probes. Why do we need line-of-sight communication when it's radio waves? Well, while radio can actually penetrate things like walls, it can't actually penetrate the density of the Earth. The Deep Space Network that's managed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory around Los Angeles is also not the only deep space network that exists. There's actually a Chinese deep space network, a Russian one, a European one, a Japanese one, and an Indian one. But the deep space network is definitely the most robust of the deep space networks that exist, and it's been around for 50 years. When the space probes and the deep space network do get a chance to chat, they have a lot to talk about. They spend a lot of time talking, but the communication is kind of like a parent and child communication. The space probe talks to the deep space network about what it's been doing, where it is, how healthy it is, while well, the Deep Space Network tells it what to do, where to go, and importantly nags it when to phone home again. It's also a slightly awkward conversation for the fact that a space probe, when it's talking to the Deep Space Network, talks to it in about 20 watts or so, a very tiny amount. And when it arrives at the Deep Space Network, that sound, that signal, that space probe that's chatting with it might only be heard by a billionth of a billionth of a watt. So the Deep Space Network has to listen very carefully. But alternatively, when the Deep Space Network talks back, it actually barks back, sending an 18,000 watt narrow signal to the space probe. So here's some really cool ways to actually interact with the Deep Space Network from your own home. The Deep Space Network managed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory actually has a site called DSN Now. And on DSN Now, you can actually look at the antennas that are currently talking to spacecrafts across our entire solar system and see who they're talking to and get a lot of really cool information about it. Second, there's a site that I actually created with my friend Lisa Ballard called Space Probes. And on Space Probes, we designed a beautiful website that you can see where all of the space probes currently are in the solar system, how far away they are from you. And you can also get really short and sweet summaries for what each space probe is and why it's cool. Also noteworthy if you are a big space robot fan like I am, Space Probes, the site actually has also a really cool shop where you can get some really cool gear. I adore geeking out about the Deep Space Network, so thanks for watching, Space Friends, and remember to join me on Patreon where you can get copies of my books, sneak peeks of my work, and other fun things. Also remember to hit the subscribe link on YouTube. See you next time.